Now, since we are on the topic of assigning permission to files and directories and changing groups and ownership, we have to look into access control list as well. Access control list is another layer or I would say a top layer or additional layer that runs on top of your permissions which allows you to assign permission per user. So what is ACL? ACL stands for Access Control List which provides an additional more flexible permission mechanism for file systems. It is designed to assist with Unix file permissions. ACL allows you to give permission for any user or group to any disk resources. The use of ACL. What is the purpose? Think of a scenario in which a particular user is not a member of a group created by you. So let's say if you create a user ABC and it's not a member of the group root, but you still want to give some read or write access, how can you do it without making the user a member of the group? And that's where we have access control list which will help us do it. So let me put it in a very simple words one more time. So let's say if you wanted to allow a file that is created by root and allow that user to read that file. Now that user is a regular user not part of the group root and you want that user to read that file. So of course the one way to do it is you change the read permission of others the last three bits so others can read it but then or everyone else could read that but we only want one user to read that instead of all other users to read it. That is why we only give permission to that particular user using ACL. Hope that clarifies. So basically ACLs are used to make a flexible permission mechanism in Linux. From Linux man pages, ACLs are used to define more fine-grained discretionary access rights for files and directories. The commands to assign and remove ACL permissions are set f ACL and get f ACL. So set file ACL, get file ACL. Get file ACL will give you the information about the existing permissions of a file and set will allow you to set the way you want it to set. Let's look at a few examples. Here are the list of commands for setting up ACLs. To add permission for a user, you have to run a command set f set file acl with minus n option to modify u for user, and then you have to separate it with the colons where user is a your username. In my case, it will be ivzol, and then column and the permission that you wanted to give that user to. And then, of course, the last part pa part is the file name. Which file do you want to give the permission to? Make sure you specify the complete absolute path. To add permission for a group, you could also allow the permissions to a specific group. So again, if you give permission, let's say read permission to the group, the middle three bits, then every group in your Linux system can read it. But what if you only want one group to read it? Right? That could be a problem. So then again, access lists access control list comes to the rescue and to add that group to allow it to read or write that specific u file you have to set with G and group name and the permissions to allow all files or directories to inherit ACL entries from the directory it is within meaning cascading which will be set with minus D, M option, and then entry, whatever that you want to put in, and the name of the file or directory. Sorry, of course, the directory, because you want to cascade. A file cannot have a file within itself, so that's why directory would have to have that. To remove a specific entry, you will have to do set FACL with minus X to remove it, and then you have to specify the user and the name of the file. This is only for a specific user. Now let's say if you want to remove all the ACL permissions from everyone then you have to do set F ACL with minus B option and the name of the file. Couple of things that you need to remember. 
one is as you assign the ACL permission to a file or directory you will see that it will add a plus sign at the end of the permission so when you run LS minus L the first column which shows you the permissions it adds the plus sign at the end of it which shows that it has the ACL assigned to it the second thing is setting with W permission with ACL does not allow you to remove a file so you could modify the file edit the file but you cannot delete that file that is something that still um, the user um, keeps the permission to itself to delete it so now let's get into our Linux machine and we'll try a couple of these commands to learn how we could set ACL permissions to a file that is owned by someone else okay I am logged in as my as root and of course you could always check the root has the pound or hash sign to it but again always make sure make sure you are on the right computer and I am on my right machine I am in my temp directory and I'm going to create a file let's say I'm gonna call it Texas and I'm gonna pick just TX as an acronym let's make sure it is created and has a right permission as you could see it is created owned by root and owned by group root and the owner can read write the group can only read and the others can only read if you do get FACL on the file you'll see more information again file is this owner group the user permission group permission other permission now comes to a part where you would want to allow everyone sorry where you want to allow only IFZOL to write to that file then IFZOL as you know counts or considers as other right IFZOL falls in this category so if you give right here if you give that permission as W right here then what will happen everyone else can write to that file so again I hope you understand where I'm getting at so to o overcome this problem where only one user can modify that file then you will assign it as a set FACL so do set FACL minus M to modify your permissions U for user who's the user I have Zol and what permission you want to give you want to give read and write and the name of the file would be temp and the file name is Texas but before we run it I just wanted to go in um, and start sorry not this I want to go in and start a duplicate session and I want to log in as I have saw right now if I do um, CD temp and cat Texas there is nothing in there by the way um, first of all sorry not cat because everyone could read it so I shouldn't have a problem but what if I wanted to edit it so VI text says it says at the bottom right here read only so even if I put in something hello or wh whatever that you want to put and save it it will tell me I can't open that file it's not editable I do not have permission so I cannot do it if when I run this command get file ACL sorry set file ACL with I absolve with read as well and write as well for that file hit enter now to verify it if it actually has set those permission you do get FACL temp TX and you will see right now right here it says user I have Zoll has that right to modify it now if I do VI Texas now you see I do not have that same error that I was getting it before I could just put in anything I want hello Texas oops hello Texas save it and it lets me save it and when I do cat on Texas I am able to do that text so that's why these ACL are so important to assign that Pacific permission to a Pacific user 
same thing if you wanted to do that group assignment to the permission you'd run the same command but instead of u you put in g and hit enter and when you do get facl you'll see now group ifsol also can modify this file so if a user is part of my group they could actually go in and modify that file. Going to number four, uh, the number three one is to actually assign those permissions and cascade down to every file and directory, which is very simple. So I'll jump right into number four. To remove that specific permissions, I will have to do set file ACL minus X. And what are you taking out? You're taking out the user IFSOL's permission and for that you have to type the file name run get facl and you'll see that ifsol user is gone but what if you want to remove everything not just user but every permission for every uh, um, user or any every group then you will have to run the command set file acl as minus b option and now when you do get FACL you'll see it's back to its original state that's how it works and when I said you cannot delete so even though I do have the right permission to write to the file edit the file I cannot delete that so if I do RM Texas by the way I have to give the permission back again um, this is the permission Let's verify it again. Yes, I do have permission to read and write to it. So if I try to remove it, it will say operation not permitted. So the reason I'm including that, so I don't want you to waste your time by, you know, uh, trying to delete that file and thinking, hey, I do have the right permission, but why can I not delete it? The reason that ACL does not put that in there, so it only gives that right to only the user, just in case by accident the user deletes that file. So that's how the ACL permission works. It's very granular and it goes down to the user level. And again, one more time, the reason it was built or it was introduced into the Unix or Linux environment is so you, we could assign permission to the user, not to the every user, but to a specific user. So try it out and try different try it on different files try on different directories see how the directory um, works as well how it could change the files if you could log in cd into the directory by giving specific access to a user